Hi viewers, welcome to the new section, Generics. We will start off with generic functions and type constraints, generic types and associated types. Then we would see generic subscripts and copy on write. Towards the end of the section, we'll have a look at generics in a protocol-oriented design and generics in the Swift standard library. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with generic functions and type constraints. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we would create a generic function. To fully understand generics, we need to understand the problem that they are designed to solve. Let's say that we wanted to create functions that swapped the values of two variables. However, for our application, we have a need to swap the instances of two integer types, two double types, and two string types. Without generics, this would require us to write these three functions. With these three functions, we can swap the instances of two integer types, two double types, and two string types. Now, if we need to swap the values of two uint32 types, two float types, or even a couple of custom types, we might easily end up with eight or nine swap functions. The worst part is each of these functions would contain duplicate code because the only difference between them is the parameter types. Generics offer a much more elegant and simple solution that eliminates all the duplicate code. See how we would condense all the three functions into a single generic function. We have defined the swap generic function. The function itself looks pretty similar to a normal function, except for the capital T placeholder used in the function definition. In most documentation, generic placeholders are defined with either T for type or E for element. For standard purposes, we will use T to define most generic placeholders. Let's look at how we would call a generic function. This highlighted code will swap two integers. If we run this code, the output is a equal to 10, b equal to 5. We can see that we call the function in exactly the same way as we called it when we wanted to swap two integers. One thing that we cannot do is pass two different types into the swap generic function because we defined only one generic placeholder. In case we attempt to run this code, we receive an error. The error that we would receive is cannot convert value of type string to expected argument type int, which tells us that we are attempting to use a string type where an integer type is expected. Now, if we needed to swap the values of two strings, we could use the same function in this manner. If we need to use multiple generic types, we can create multiple placeholders by separating them with commas. This example shows how to define multiple placeholders for a single function. Here, we are defining two generic placeholders, t and e. In this case, we can set the t placeholder to one type and the e placeholder to a different type. This function will accept parameters of different types. However, since they are of different types, we would be unable to swap the values. There are also other limitations on generics as well. For instance, we may think that this generic function would be valid. However, we would receive an error if we tried to implement it. See? The error we receive is binary operator equal to cannot be applied to two t operands. We might think that this would make generics hard to use. However, we have a way to tell Swift that we expect the type will have certain functionality. This is done with type constraints. A type constraint specifies that a generic type must inherit from a specific class or conform to a particular protocol. Let's look at how to use type constraints by rewriting the generic equal function to use the comparable protocol. To specify the type constraint, we put the type or protocol constraint after the generic placeholder, where the generic placeholder and the constant are separated by a colon. This new function compares the values of the two parameters and returns true if they are equal or false if they are not. We can declare multiple constraints just like we declare multiple generic types. This example shows how to declare two generic types with different constraints. In this function, the type defined by the t placeholder must inherit from the my class 
and the type defined by the E placeholder must implement the my protocol. Now that we have looked at generic functions and type constraints, 